Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin are likely best positioned to deal with all the chaos in college football right now. And there's a ton of chaos in college football right now. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a tenured veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about how Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin finding itself in the catbird seat, even with all the chaos surrounding college football. You have them expanding playoffs when Ole Miss is entering its title window. You have them allowing players to transfer every year when Ole Miss has the portal king. All of the chaos is good for Ole Miss. Crappy for college sports, but good for Ole Miss. The Grove Collective is doing their March to Victory campaign this month. What does it mean? This is their new NIL campaign for Ole Miss Athletics, and their hope is to raise $10 million and 10,000 total members by the end of March. It's a March Madness type bracket style competition that pits regions of the U.S. against each other to see who can give the most money to Ole Miss' NIL campaign. Sweet 16 ends Monday, so this is your last weekend to vote and prop up your own region. Let's keep Ole Miss Athletics at the forefront and go to thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory. That's thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make that happen. This is the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day. And a special hello to the um, everydayers that make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So there is a ton of chaos that is surrounding college football and the NCAA and all of that stuff right now. And yesterday it came out that today they were likely going to expand the playoff to 14 teams starting in 2026, and they are set up with different pay modes as well. The article came from ESPN. A 14-team playoff is expected to be formalized in the next 24 hours. That article was yesterday. About much time today, they're expecting that to happen. It says the college football playoff is on the brink of moving to one important step closer to an expected 14-team playoff that would begin in 2026 as 10 FBS conferences and Notre Dame, which I can't, it's still ridiculous that Notre Dame gets to sit at the table alone. They're pushing to meet Friday, uh, meet a Friday deadline to agree to the next contract and inform the college football playoff that they will participate in the playoff in 2026 and beyond. Multiple sources told ESPN on Thursday that each league and Notre Dame are expected to sign a legal agreement by midday Friday. Starting in 2026, the new agreement will codify the further financial separation of the expanded Big Ten and SEC from everyone else in college athletics. We'll get to that in a second. And the group of five commissioners have been in a difficult position without any negotiating power, but sources indicate they won't be excluded from the college football playoff. This is where it gets important. The financial distribution of the expected 14-team playoff will look radically different than its playoff predecessors. On an annual basis, for example, the Big Ten and SEC will be making more than $21 million per school, a number that is up from nearly $5.5 million previously. In the ACC, they will get more than $13 million annually. The Big 12 will get more than 12 annually. And Notre Dame is expected to get more than $12 million as well. And sources tell ESPN there will be a financial incentive for any independent that reaches the CFP there will no longer be a participation bonus for any other leagues, a detail that was frustrating to some leaders of the group of five. So we have this news right here, and this is a big piece setting up what the college football playoff will become in 2026 and beyond and how the major conferences, the big two, the power two, as we honestly should start referring to them now 
in the SEC and the Big Ten. They're going to separate from what is the ACC and what is the Big 12 that makes about half as much money just for being in the playoff as the Big Ten and the SEC. Ole Miss entering its title window, which is what it's doing right now. Everybody has them around top five, top six, top seven in the country. They're going into this window with a chance to separate themselves. And also, it's kind of cool that Mississippi, little old Mississippi, the poorest state in America, is going to have two of the richest colleges in existence. That is going to be funny, and I'm going to enjoy that. Ole Miss has a chance to really, really separate themselves by getting into this playoff. Now, they have not uh, decided on a format just yet, but the rumor is, and this is the rumor, that they have made it to where a top um, four, four or five, I think it's top four, gets an automatic bid, just normal, the Champions Conference, and the rest of them get um, automatic qualif- or, or get at large berths. And everybody was so scared about the Big Ten and the SEC doing all that. It, it appears that at large berths are going to be what wins out in the end, which is going to be taken up by the SEC and the Big Ten anyway. For Ole Miss coming into this title window, being more relevant now than they have ever been, the timing could not be much better. You have a coach that is an early adopter, and we're going to talk about where he sits with all the transfer stuff and all the extra stuff that's going around college football and how Ole Miss is going to take care of that. But the number one thing and the number one most lucrative thing is that Ole Miss is entering a playoff window run to where they can set up year to year and be in the conversation for a ludicrous amount of money. More money than Florida State could hope to get. More money than Clemson can hope to get. More money than Arizona, Colorado, all of those can hope to get. And Ole Miss is going to be in a prime position to get there. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying it's a done deal. I'm saying that everybody thinks that they have the team and the horses to get it done. And I am fully expecting that to happen. And honestly, everybody's expecting that to happen. And this might be the reason that Ole Miss is the big winner in college football right now, because they have gone from obscurity, let's just say obscurity, 15 years ago. That's when Coach Orgeron was at Ole Miss. Ole Miss was going three and eight. They were getting beat by Wyoming and getting embarrassed by Wake Forest. That's like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. They start building up. And just at the point where they hit their apex, they are at the point where they can get the most bang for their butt right now. And everybody in the fan base is all in. All of the coaches are all in. The collective is all in. And we'll talk about that in just a second as well. I am pretty fired up about exactly what can happen. This 14-team playoff, I mean, them expanding from 12 teams to 14 teams before a game is even played is ridiculous. And my conspiracy theory on that is, Two years ago, the Big Ten slowed everything down. Everybody remembers the alliance, right? Everybody remembers that. Well, I think the alliance was a Trojan horse designed to get Fox a seat at the table. Right now, ESPN is going to get these rights for the college football playoff moving forward. Fox is going to try and weasel in as well and do whatever they have to do. And ESPN is going to sublet some of those rights, I do believe. And you're going to have a situation where they want inventory to where you can make that worthwhile to happen. And this extra couple of games of a 14-team playoff will accomplish just that. So look for another broadcast partner to enter the fray over the next couple of years into a 14-team college football playoff. Really interesting stuff. Thanks again for listening and making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. Listen, the 
everyone can transfer free for all that is going on is going to be hard. So isn't it kind of better that you have the portal king than be stuck in 20, 2008? Think about it. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to RRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match, must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to legal, to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood's IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial, LLC, remember SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV Channels app to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On, as well as most of the big pro leagues and colleges conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a lot more. Not to mention all the great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Mark your calendar for the Locked On College Basketball Bracket break Breakdown Show Monday, March 18th at 7 a.m. Eastern. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown on Monday, March 18th on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you get your podcast. All right, so we talked in the first segment about a whole bunch of chaos that's going on around college sports and spe specifically college football with the expansion of the playoff. Now, the NCAA is getting sued by everybody all over. There's lawsuits happening about employer employees. There's lawsuits happening about unionizing. There's lawsuits happening about eligibility and whether or not you can force a non-compete and all of this stuff. And the NCA is losing every single one of them. So what I'm talking about right now, the multiple transfer athletes, since the lawsuit, the NCAA said they can play this year. They're not even going to require a waiver. You can transfer again immediately after spring practice. And in that, on Wednesday, the NCAA said, while it is not certain whether the preliminary injunction issued by the judge will remain in place during the 2024-2025 season, athletes who transfer again during or after the current academic year, year won't be subject to the requirement that they have to sit out one year. However, transfer notification rules still must be followed. You still have to do the transfer portal thing. You still have to be in good standing. You still have to be academically eligible. So if you're in good standing, you can go. But if that happens, you can make it. The advantage that Ole Miss has in this situation, and everybody's going to look, is like, oh my gosh, this player can transfer away. They can move out. And that is absolutely the case. Don't hear any different. 
But transferring out has not been a problem for Ole Miss over the last two cycles. Nobody has left the program that they just overly want to keep. It's not a situation to where like Sam Hartman went to Notre Dame. It's not a situation like Quinn Ewers going to Texas. That hasn't happened yet. And Lane Kiffin has the reputation as the portal king. Now, don't get me wrong. This is going to cause a ton of headache to every single coach out there. And that's the point. Every single coach is going to go through this. You want to be at a place where it's branded as the portal king. Ole Miss knows how to use the transfer portal. Ole Miss has done all of this to bring in all of this talent that you see. Lane Kiffin is going to be at the forefront of this, just like he has on everything else. If you look at his history and what has happened over the last, I don't know, three or four years since this has happened, Lane Kiffin has been an early adopter, and he is going to try something. If it doesn't work, he will tweak that and try it a little bit different next time. But one thing he won't do is be hesitant to the change. It's one of the reasons Ole Miss is in the position they're in, is Lane Kiffin is an early adopter. He has embraced the transfer portal, and as it gets more and more important, we're going to have to, A, recalibrate what we think about recruiting with also how we develop talent and bring them in. Because if they can be brought in and transfer every single year, it doesn't matter if they're a high school player, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. Everybody essentially needs to be treated like grad transfers. Lane Kiffin probably sees that. They have an excellent player personnel department. They know exactly what's going on, and they seem to have been able to get really good players in as well. Walter Nolan, who just signed with the Grove Collective, Prince Liam Mon uh, Juice Wells, all of the players on the defensive back. We talked about Key Lawrence, Yam Banks, Amorium Walker, those guys, Trey Amos, Chris Poupal. Those players on the defensive side of the ball, we know what they can be moving to next year. We know that Ole Miss's high expectations in large part is because of that. But they are here because Lane Kiffin is an early adopter. And as long as college football is chaotic, Ole Miss is going to thrive in this chaos. It's it's a weird situation. You want things to be predictable. But the thing about it is, once they get predictable, everybody has the analytics to how to make it work, how to make it better. You have a large sample size of what's going on. In a constantly changing world of NCAA rules, the early adopter is king. You can't be slow to get into the game because if you are, it'll get you, it'll bite you. Now, another thing that's interesting is Nick Saban, by the way. Nick Saban was, I guess, not called in front of Congress, but they did a roundtable with Ted Cruz talking about NIL and college sports, and it basically was a plea, essentially, to keep players from being employees. And I get it, okay? I get it. Nick Saban got out of coaching in large part of because of all this chaos that we're talking about this episode. What is making Lane Kiffin a really good coach and really – just perfectly fit for this air, ran Nick Saban off. Nick Saban has known as a my way or the highway type of coach. That does not work in the transfer portal. Nick Saban is a my way or the highway type of coach. In the NIL world, that's not going to work as well. They want to get paid for doing it your way. And because of that, those type of coaches, they're dinosaurs. You need somebody that is a little bit of a forward thinking like Lane Kiffin. Now, here's the thing. If you want college football to be fixed, as far as player movement slowed down, NIL under control, stuff like that, you have to make players employees and they have to be contracted employees. They, they just do. But the problem with that is basically women's basketball, baseball, um, soccer, golf, all of those programs, they're gone. All of those ac academic programs for student athletes, they're out the window. It is essentially going to be football and basketball, and that is about it. The flip side of it is, if you don't do any of that, 
it's already been proven in court that they are going to treat this not much differently than club sports and intramural sports to where a, a college student can do whatever another college student can do and they can go to any school and there's not an eligibility process or anything like that to where there's a non-compete. And those are the two realms that you have to deal with. Either there's absolutely no regulation or a lot of the sports get destroyed. That's the reality of what we're looking at. And I think that people and they were talking on Washington was kind of a have their cake and eat it too type thing. And that's not possible because the two things that they want are at opposite ends of the spectrums. Coaches want 1975 football. Players want what we see right now. Now, feels like there's going to be an equilibrium at some point, right? It feels like something like that is going to go down. But until it does, until it naturally gets there, you're probably going to be kind of stuck with what you have. Still more to come on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, Locked On on the po- Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ole Miss's season has likely come to an end in Nashville with a loss to Texas A&M. We'll talk about that in just a second. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys are able to take it to the next level. The Utah State Aggies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team that absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say, win life, go Rogue. And that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day, and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. Ole Miss dropped a game to Texas A&M in the SEC tournament. That likely ended Ole Miss's season. Now, there's a chance that Ole Miss can end up in the NIT. Um, No bid has been turned down or anything like that. But the rumor is right now that Ole Miss was not going to play in the NIT. And Ole Miss was going to concentrate on the transfer portal for next year, which already some players are starting to enter into the portal and you're starting to see Ole Miss's name get dropped. Now, we'll see if Ole Miss turns down that. Now, an excellent interview on this team. There's going to be books written about this Ole Miss basketball team and their difference to play well with the ball in their hand and their defense, their, their position to play absolutely terribly whenever the ball was not in their hand. You're talking about a team that at times looked allergic to loose balls and rebounding looking like a situation on the offensive end of basically playing, hey, let's spread it out and let's go one-on-one in instead of ball movement. When the ball moved around, they made shots. They did what they were supposed to do. The offense looked pretty good. Matthew Morrell was probably in most games this year the best player on the court as far as basketball talent goes. Different things didn't work out. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Ole Miss had set two seven-footers and had a trouble rebounding the basketball. Ole Miss had some scrappy players, but seeming lost every loose ball thing and had trouble blocking out and giving up easy offensive rebounds and, and layups. When Ole Miss shot the ball well, they won. Ask Florida. Ask Mississippi State. 
That's the early part of their schedule, to be honest. When they didn't shoot the ball well, they didn't win the game. Judging by February, only win against the Missouri Tigers. They beat them twice. So a loss in the SEC tournament was probably expected. This basketball team finished 20 and 12. They won 20 basketball games, and that should not be understated. Because in the end, and this is the important thing about this basketball team, they won nine games a year ago. They won three conference games. They lost to North Alabama. They flipped that around and they won seven SEC games, 20 games overall, and had a pretty significant win over the Florida Gators. That turned out to be the team. When I said at the beginning of the year that Ole Miss was going to get somebody, it turned out to be the Florida Gators. And that turned out to be a good team. And they ended up beating them by like 20 points. So two things are true here. First, it is okay for people to be disappointed about what happened in February and not making the NCAA tournament after what happened all the way to about January 30th when Ole Miss was 18 and three. It's okay to be disappointed about that. It's also not okay to be disappointed in this basketball team. This basketball team won 20 games and they overperformed by almost every metric over what they did a year ago. They did on sheer will. They got lucky at times, but they won games early on and they won close games to the point where they gave themselves a chance in the last week of the season. We were still invested in Ole Miss basketball. That is a credit to Chris Beard, and that's why he got extended. Ole Miss basketball is going to go above and beyond to be in a good spot for 2025. I have no doubt about that. They'll hit the transfer portal. They'll find the right pieces. They'll get some players that are really good. And they might not be the best ones in the world, but they will fit a role. They tried to do it this year. It didn't quite work out. They kind of reminded me of the 2022 football team. Now, basketball season is not over. The men's team might be over, but the women's team still has selection Sunday this Sunday. And Coach Yo and the ladies, we are desperately trying to avoid that 8-9 seeding line. And some seedings, Ole Miss gets a 7 or maybe even a 6. But if we look at how Ole Miss has been seeded in the past, I am concerned that Ole Miss has Caitlin Clark in their future or somebody like that. Because this is the, if Ole Miss gets an 8 or a 9 seed, which I am completely convinced that they would attempt to do that, despite how well they've played. Ole Miss has played South Carolina. You're not going to have a rematch with them. Ole Miss has played LSU twice. You're not going to have a rematch with them. That leaves UConn. That leaves Iowa. If you get the seventh seed, you might get Ohio State. And there's some teams that are really bunched together that'll be real interesting to see. We're all rooting for Coach Yo and the Lady Rebs to get a decent draw, um, but we'll see exactly how that goes, and we're all going to be wary of anything that comes out of Indianapolis. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day. We have Chris Gordy and David Eckert this weekend. The sec- for your second listen, though, check out Locked On as they've launched their first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel, on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on free Fire TV channels app. And for those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Have a good weekend, everybody. Hotty toddy.